I went to the corner, my friends they weren't there. They said, hey man, you want your share? I turned around and walked away. I didn't want to live nowhere. Hey y'all, Douglas Scott McCarran again. Um, I want to talk about something that seems to infect men. Possibly women, but really infects men. And it's this whole being tough within, not being swayed, not being hurt. Kind of a protection, being internally tough and protective of yourself. And uh, what was the note I made about it here? Doo -doo -doo. Also, the thing about being dead within so as not to feel. Now, a lot of people don't go to that extent. But there is this kind of cult of my emotions don't sway me. I don't get felt. I don't feel them. Um, a lot of people get to the point of they actually consider being dead within the ideal situation because they don't want to be swept up by their emotions. They want to be in command of it. But, you know, you're not really in command of it. You're completely dominated by trying to not feel what you feel. And so there's this big suppression that goes on inside men. Um, you know, I don't know how much it is with women because, you know, I'm not a culture that way, but there's this need to dominate and control and be in control of yourself and belittle everyone around you so, you know, everything's about you and the way you think it should be. And all that does is just keep pounding you back into the very prison that's causing you your pain until... <clears throat> until you just decide to stop feeling so that you're not affected by these, you know, the lamentations and softness and emotions that go on. And so you live your whole life thinking you're dead, but you aren't. You're just suppressed and feeling all stuff. And then, you know, you need to be a man to, you know, anger management, control your anger. And I understand where it comes from because boys in particular, are very self-absorbed, self-important, uh, dominating, they resent being uh, told to like suppress their aggressiveness. They have the bodies where they can overwhelm women and they go around and beat the tar out of each other. You know, I mean, YouTube is full of young males beating each other senseless and then, you know, laughing because they taught this person who's now unconscious a lesson. They learned them. Some of them, you know, they're going to go to the hospital and never, ever recover. And it was all out of the need to, you know, it's a need to, like, beat up somebody who's daring to challenge your authority or your way of looking at things or doing the way, doing the way you want to, you know. Let's go beat the shit out of each other. Sorry, beat the tar out of each other over some woman who may or may not care about either of you. But it's both of you lost inside this feeling and anger that just completely dominates and runs you. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of killers talk about getting to the point where they don't feel anything. Soldiers get to the point where they don't feel anything. It's part of the training. It's not just you dehumanize the other. It's you kind of, you know, the first time you pull a trigger and shoot somebody, it's gut-wrenching. But by the time you get to about the 20th, it's just, you know, bang, bang, bang. And you just kind of congratulate yourself on not feeling anything. But the thing is, is you do feel all those things. Now, it is true because men can be very violent and angry. They are taught to keep that stuff suppressed and to uh, manage it. 
But there's not a whole lot of working on why is the anger there and why are they pissed off. I know for me, I spent the vast majority of my life pissed off and angry. But me in particular, I pointed inwards at myself and never went outwards toward other people. Because you know, I have my whole I suck, I don't matter thing, so all of my anger bubbled up from that. and That and, you know, I want to be number one, I want to be the hero, and I didn't get to be. Yeah. You know, you know if for me it was humiliating. I played the guitar excellently. And I would uh, keep entering these festivals, and everyone would tell me I was the best guitar player there. And then when the crowd voted on who was number one, I was last. And that was quite annoying to me. I think I've also told the story about, you know, I wanted to be the, the religious. When I was young, I was going to be the big spiritual teacher. And people would come to me to hear spiritual advice. And this dog came up wagging its tail at me. And I'm like, oh, look, this... This animal has the capacity to read my soul, and it knows who I am, that I'm important. It's wagging its tail because it's happy to see me. And then it ran around behind me and bit me on the ass. Hmm. Anyway. You know, I don't know if women don't do it just simply because they realize they're smaller and they can't really get into a physical fight with a guy. You know, women are constantly going into fights with each other over boys and how their hair looks and they don't like the way that person said that or they want to be the one who rules and defines things and if you don't go with what they say they're going to come beat you up you know it's just the same thing there's something you know we've talked about this cocoon before it sits here and rules and dominates everything and convinces you that you're number one and everyone's supposed to listen to you and anyone who doesn't you get offended at Political parties, it's the same thing. People, you know, I have my beliefs. This is the way the country is. And anybody out there who doesn't agree with it is a traitor to the country. Not they have a different opinion. They're just traitors. And they're trying to inflict their way on me. So you have people accusing each other. You know, you can watch it all day long on television, accusing each other of you're an American and you don't care about your fellow citizens and denouncing one another and, you don't care about me, and I get denounced, and on and on and on. It's all just this cocoon, this machine of inner uh, vindictiveness and chatter that dominates all of us. And it makes sense to actually suppress it if we're going to walk around and start throwing rocks at each other and punching each other and sticking long poles at each other and fights out on the streets. I mean, that could devolve into quite a, quite a mess for a society. Now, I don't mean you should suppress everything to the point of you acquiesce. You know, part of the fighting that's going on is how the police treat the black cu culture and how the black culture treats the police. And a lot of it's also just personal upsets that's being expressed as a political thing that isn't necessarily got it part of the political thing. It's just all sorts of varieties of things. I knew one woman, she became a lesbian. She was a political lesbian. She uh, had a great desire to be on the outside and then condemn the people who were put on the outside. So she became a lesbian. I mean, I literally watched her do it. She became a lesbian, and then anybody who didn't accept her was a fascist, I believe was the word she used. You know, and then you get to somebody like, you know, some of the murderers. You know, Charlie Manson used to talk about how he was unmoved and didn't feel anything. And yet, you know, he's a very wire, hyper energy guy. And you just kind of watch the way he talked and moves his face. And, you know, he would say he was mimicking you, but I always got the impression he was just having all this stuff going off in his head where he believed you were doing such and such, and then he would project that out to us. And the main thing he learned to do as a kid was to not feel things. 
But then you'd say, you know, I do feel things. But, you know, a lot of, you know, Kemper and all these people have that stone face, no feeling, and, yeah, I just killed these people and I don't care. You know, that's real extremes. I wanted to, uh, you know, suppress my feelings so that I didn't, like, treat myself badly and lash out at people. So I ended up spending 55 years stewing in, it, stewing in my anger until I was finally able to let go. Again, for me, therapy, the Landmark Forum did it, you know, working with that, you get the machine exposed, and you get to actually look at things, personal desire to be healed, all that is useful. You know, and it's just getting out in football and running at each other to express anger in a controlled environment. Yeah, you get to express it. You still got it. It's not being released. It's not being healed. And to me, you know, again, I've said this several times, it comes boiling up from childhood. You didn't get your way. You got suppressed. So you, you get together with a bunch of other men who also have the same feeling and you beat the tar out of each other and you spend your whole life being having this seething anger and then you die and that's life and having had the experience of letting all that go and be calm and peaceful and self-loving and being open to other people I just don't believe that's the best way for you to live your life so you know one of the things that is interesting in a lot of these courses like Landmark and other stuff is people will use it as a way to free themselves up internally so then they can go accomplish all their goals of trying to run a business and dominate and dictate and have it all come out. And yet all those things they're striving for are really just more of their internal story. It's like this background unseen part that you perceive the world through that you don't even know to question it. You know? My particular case, it was the whole I suck, nobody loves me thing and going back and discovering it wasn't that my parents didn't love me or rejected me, it was that I rejected them. And then everything went quiet inside of me. It's like the game was up the game knew that I understood what was going on, and it just simply stopped. And it was quite a shock, but I'm really, really grateful it happened. So, if you're running around trying to be tough and suppress yourself and feel nothing, you know, feel no pain when actually you do feel pain and anger and sadness, you don't have to. You know, therapy, various anonymous groups, alcohol, you know, AA, talk groups. Again, I've talked about Landmark Forum. I don't know if it's the only one that does it. There's this, you know, this thing about people talk about you can retrain the way you think and the way you act. And that's true. That's in a lot of stuff. My experience on the Landmark Forum was that wasn't really the goal. It oftentimes appears to be, but the goal really is to just let it all become calm. Where you become whole, perfect, and complete. So, quit being tough. Become a human being. Go out and let that stuff loose. Not in violence, but getting it healed. All right. Thank you.